Oop, closing wrong window. Cancel. Bloop. So we have the uh, sidebar view in now. Changes to the UI, um, things are in the sidebar now instead of everything all on the same page. Uh, don't have a button in to open the current tree by default, and we're not sure I want to. Uh, but the high, like the, the current thing is highlighted. I maybe need to like tweak things a little so it's clear that like you know these are all part of the same thing Discord at the moment. Okey So, we have things to add. So, this is going to be... ingots. Oh yeah, that, that, that's when my brain got distracted. I was going to update the to-do list. Oh, and I've just realised I forgot to. There's a thing I forgot to post on the uh, thing. So I've got to rebuild the calculator a second. <coughs> Building, uh, let's fill the production in, then we can just hit the save button uh, when I'm ready to do the sink. So steel ingots being produced. So I've 
according to this, we need 327.9375. And we're using solid steel ingot. And then the next thing being made, I think, is the steel pipes. So now everything's been moved into the sidebar, it's a lot easier to put the settings and plus fill, plus group buttons everywhere. So there's a whole bunch of code got removed from the uh, template file. a thought. Okay, so two things I need to add to the to-do list before I forget. Let's put the uh, demo stream on the thing. Need to be able to better highlight how which pools are part of a group slash collection. Need to add a toggle to include the ID as part of the pool name, or at least uh, or at least add a method to reduce the scope of the uh, state dependent check to the current group slash pool. Ready, so I can hit sync. That should have completed by now. That's weird. Uh, hit save. Copy. Upload. Reload. Load, loop. So I'm making 218.65 total, but I've got steel pipes on two separate manifolds here. Uh, one for the encased steel beams and one for the actual heavy modular frame. So rather than just putting the number in in its entirety, I'm going to use the calculator input feature and say uh, 144.375 plus 74.25. Uh, we want to fling all of these steel ingots the steel pipes. Yeah, I think I've still got that bug to iron out yet. That did actually save that, didn't it? Yeah, it did. It just 
not updating. Uh, did I already record that bug? Uh, I think I'll put the slides around the end of the field. Yeah, that's already recorded. I haven't had the time to uh, track it down because I've been doing the feature work. Uh, it should go away, however, if I uh, close the thing and like, reload it because it does the full calculation. Oh, I think I have just thought of a fix though. Do 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 Where is the calculator function? Okay, let's switch to the uh, VS Code view. So we want to be down in recalculate something somewhere. Here we go. Okay, so we have pools impacting pool. So that should like this should force that pool that's sending the steel pipes. Uh, the steel ingots to the steel pipes thing to be recalculated. So then we recalculate the current pool. Um, and then what it really should be doing is everything that this impact should then be recalculated. I don't know that that will fix it. But let's give it a try. Uh, so we want new method pools this uh, pools impacted by pool. So I'm making a new set. Uh, we want to get the current pool outputs. I think. Yep. Actually, we just. I don't even. I don't need a new method. I've already got to get it for it. And I've just forgotten. Um. Const effects equals pool dot effects plus effects dot length. Const entry of effects. Debounce wants it. If progress bar is specified, advance the progress value. Da -da 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 -da. Blah. So let's delete the build directory. These issues listed here are non-issues because um, I haven't figured out the cause exactly. But when I um, add new data sources from JSON files, uh, the TypeScript stuff doesn't pick the changes up. It's really tedious to have to like restart the uh, IDA all the time.
out again. Okay, so I'm going to pop back into uh, steel ingots. Set the output to zero, save it, and then when I um, go change the number back, it should fix it. Should I wait for the progress part to finish? steel pipes, it should say steel ingots, that's expected. We'll configure the output, give it the full amount. Yeah. Now I'm not, I'm not going to classify that as having fixed it, because that's a different replication, that was with an output already existing. Um, we'll soon be able to see if that issue still exists. I just realized I forgot to turn off the VS Code for the source, didn't I? <laughs> anyway, yes, things, stuff, nonsense. Um, we're not making concrete. Concrete's coming in. So the next thing being made... That's a really weird... Why did I manifold things like that? I think, well, like, was... Was I planning on doing something differently? Like, this will be in the VOD archives somewhere. Um, but I've just noticed... I, think when I, I will have noticed, like, previously. I, I didn't notice during the last stream that what's going on here is we have this single manifold here coming out hitting this merger and then we've got this dual manifold making the exact same shit going into the merger and then rather than these two being specced for the two different manifolds that they're going into it's just round robin splitting it which is like really weird because one of these should eventually back up but I've also I note I've got uh, Mark 3 belts on one side Mark 2 belts on the other so there will be a bias uh, if you ever have um, more than 120 going in actually no if you have more than 240 going in you, it, it'll split more to the left because of the uh, higher belt speed Anyway, the next thing is the encased uh, Watsons. Industrial pipe beam things. Twenty point six two five. So we want a new pool. In case industrial beams. Oh, not the same group. Yes. So 
performance on the uh, item search there has improved a bit, but still a teensy bit junky. Using the pipe recipe. And we want 20.625. Uh, yeah, calculate the lines up with the signage. So we're gonna send 144.375 over to case of just sealed beams. And if I hit plus, it should trigger a recalculation, and with that patch being in, steel pipe should drop off the ingredients list. Except it doesn't. So that's still not fixed. Is there any other additional manufacturing going on inside here? So we've got an case industrial beams on dual manifold, and then we have the two uh, manifolds of HMF. Do things on there, so it's two separate pools. frame Send eleven point two five to the diffused what's it? And well I need to send the ninety three point three seven five over first.
think another approach I could be taking uh, in here is uh, well, st like you take the starting point of the the pools that impact the pool and the current pool. You stick them in a set and then you pass that set around a function which basically would normally recursively uh, calculate non-stop if you have like you know recursive production going on uh, but because of the presence of the set would say if this is already being recalculated this pass uh, don't And then all we would need to do is calculate the current pool last, I think. Well, double check out by recalculating it last. Because if this goes anywhere, these need to be updated. But if any, like if if any recursive calculation then goes in, then that's that's the thing. Uh, I could just put an like an extra calculation pass in. So they do get cleaned up on success. Or failure, uh, except no, they don't here. I had anything in the console. I mean, yes, the stuff in the era console, but not relating to that. Let's change this from set timeout to request idle callback. code source off for a bit. So in theory that flaw is done. Uh, like the only things we can't be accounting for here are the concrete production which is uh, downstairs possibly in two different places. So we've got some concrete production over here uh, and then there's the concrete starter factory thing well the former starter factory uh, uh, location because I used to start down there and um, now I've got my starter factory in the rocky desert like nestled over there so there's these two limestone sources all being set to produce concrete Merge it in, fling it up here. Is the build finished? Yes, it has. So I think initially in this try catch uh, block that I had up, the original intent was uh, if the Calculation throws an exception. Uh, but it's like it, it just should be considered completely tight and shouldn't bother recalculating. Uh, but I think that that shouldn't happen in practice. 
So, eh. It, 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 whenever the uh, like the, the no callback is being uh, called, it should clean up the debounce. Okay, so let's hit save. See that the DOM's re rendering uh, images pro when it probably shouldn't. Just getting re rendered in DOM during calculation. That will be a direct result of the async image loading code. So the, like un uncompress the file that tracks all of the uh, metadata for the images is 1.2 megabyte. If you load up a new calculator, you won't have any images displaying. So fetching that data uh, is a waste of time on a slow connection. It is entirely possible at some point I might even have a thing just to say, like, no images whatsoever. Emojis don't count. Um, so I did switch all, like, because I was making the separation of the image data, I, I changed it to a promise based approach using the until directive from uh, lit HTML, which means that it is. Uh, re-rendering every single time that gets called because it's saying oh I need to go request this thing and I put this temporary element in place but it's already been calculated so I either need to figure out how to use the cache directive on there or I need to add um, a short circuit with a temporary, uh, well, with a, a duplicate copy of the image data. Right. Modular frame. So here we want to make steel ingots. Three more pools, one for steel pipe. And then one each for those. Ah, oh, there we go. Back to UI issue. Uh, pool config dialog should say name of pool so when clicking tug icon amongst several unnamed pools you can be sure which pool you clicked on I mean, that's something I could do now in VS Code, but it's not a major bug. So I'm going to 
get those uh, changes from any committed. From timeout to quest idle callback. to do list. I want to check if it if the ingredients thing behaves when I do production backwards. So we want to produce modular frame, and that bugs back lovely. Uh, so we've got three modular frame and the steeled frame recipe. Five modular frame. Also on the steel frame. Uh, Should we put the full amount in on both of these? It should uh, do the overflow thing. So I mentioned this during the previous stream. So you know, we, we fixed that uh, availability issue where it was just showing the full amount the entire time. So now I'm just saying there's a shortfall in modular frame. Which means there's a possibility that we signage or, or me productions uh, Wrong. That's what I need sixteen point five total. That needs seven point five. That needs nine. Okay, so I can see what the issue is here. I am setting the full amount to go to both. And literally the full amount is going to both, rather than saying it only needs this, only send it that. Uh, I'm not sure whether that's intended behavior or not. Um, because like I'm, I'm not sending these things like direct it is going down a uh, like a single belt here down to a splitter um, so the other thing I can be doing is I can actually Oh wait, the slow scroll bar. <laughs> I'll need to fix that live. Overflow by Octo. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's better. Alright. Oh, scroll bars in calculation area. So let's fix that. CSS file, what the plus CSS file. Da, 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 da. Uh, margin left. Yeah, that's this one. So we want flex grow to make sure that uh, it takes up the full remaining width here. Then what was the other change? Uh, if I put the scroll bars on the actual container, will that also do the job? not appearing on calculation area. I don't need to do the other one after the other, I've got two terminals open. I was going down here to shift um, these over. I think there's a little, little bit too much of an uncomfortable delay with switching these. Um, let's have a look. Right, so I'm currently using the hidden um, attribute being set by um, well, the view renderer thing. So the current pool ID is getting changed in settings, and then uh, the re-render uh, happens, which forces the entire thing to re-render. Uh, I could switch these away from buttons to um, labels and uh, radio buttons. And then the settings persistence would be a little bit behind. So I would be switching from using the hidden attributes to basically saying um, pool dot, oh, pool colon has um, show this pool checked. Okay, so I'm going to oh, desync those files. Switching pools can get laggy. Uh, switch to DOM based, well, DOM slash CSS based approach rather than relying on let HTML render loop. Now, I shouldn't have to change too much for the existing code to behave as expected. 
some of the existing code always expects actions to come from buttons. This would be an action coming from a label. Um, like the, the only thing that might get a little bit funky is what to do about the fast forward uh, rewind buttons up here. Uh, those could get changed to labels. Um, they could also get changed to just basic DOM checks. So rather than uh, triggering a re-render, it would go find the DOM element for the appropriate pool. And... Uh, Go and change the radio button. Anyway, we've done a six, we need to do a save and reload. I wonder if there's a GDPR compatible way to like do a thing for um, save and reload automatically. Because the, the main issue um, is that to trigger an automatic reload of the, like, whatever you saved, I would need to store it, probably in local storage. And for the best user experience, that would have to be done transparently. But whether that falls under the exemptions for um, notices for GDPR stuff, for saying uh, expected behaviour, like in order to facilitate the reload functionality, I would have to persist that storage. It's GDPR is annoying. It's one of the reasons why I do client-side um, search on the archive and uh, community highlights things, because you know, like I, I'm not processing the data on the server side, so like I'm not a data controller there. The QA site search like is server side, but it's, there's no accounts, so there's no cookies to track, so there's no uh, things. So it's like usual expectation thingies. Anyway, scroll bars are in. So, um, do, 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 do. We're going to switch over to the storage thing. Uh, Maybe look into doing a save auto load feature. Uh, would probably need to persist history as well. Because you wouldn't want to be having these buttons working and then you save and reload and then the, the, you can't go back to where you were kind of thing. Alright. So we have a surplus of nine. So we can send that surplus onto um, diffuse modular frame. So now it's getting inputs from two places. It's getting them from the modular frame floor, but it's getting zero because of the way uh, output flinging functions. And then it's also getting them from the two storage manifold, which is less probably less intuitive but does mimic how this actually is laid out. Let's try, try to trigger a recalculation because the uh, numbers aren't picked up. 
I really don't want to have to switch back to doing a full recalculation on every change because that would just be really annoying. Uh, I mean, I suppose one of the things I could do is I could check which pools are not impacted by the current pool at all. And then, you know, do a full recalculation on every pool except those. Because the way the uh, full recalc works. Uh, pool. Pool, pool, pool. Uh, I forget which file it's in. Calculate. Got in calculator. <laughs> God, it is. I thought it was on the pool. Okay, so uh, recalculate. You pass it a pool. It recalculates everything that impacts it, so that all of the uh, supplies are, are up to date. Uh, recalculates itself, so the input output surplus is all good, and then recalculates its destinations. Recalculate all. Um, recalculate all pools, and then adds the set of um, the pools that get affected by that to a set there. Oh, sorry, it, it, it does the set calculations first without the recalculation. Recalculates all pools, then recalculates all affected pools. Change recalculate single pool to behave more like recalculate all. Are the uh, recalculate afterwards? Set. That might not fix the issue, but it will like, be more um, effective. And it goes back to what I was saying earlier about trying to do like an anti recursive um, update thing. Um, so you would be saying, um, we would still be doing this here, where we are recalculating all of the pools that feed into the current pool. Those would then go into a set, because if they impact more than just the current pool, those other pools probably would be recalculated as well. Um, Then we recalculate the current pool, and then the effects get added to the recalculation set. And then you maybe re exhaustively update stuff. Uh, uh, again, there could also be this thing of you just switch back to like recalculating everything. It's, it's confusing. I like. I, like, I want to have it. I want to have the calculator be bug-free, but also be performant. Recalculating everything makes it bug-free, but when you have as many pools in this as I'm eventually going to have, it's not going to be performant to recalculate everything if like stuff hasn't actually changed. Uh, let's have a look. Consider adding a changed, unchanged flag to pools, such that recalculate all Oop. Uh, 
should calculate or recalculate all um, without a uh, false calculation parameter will do nothing. So the idea there is uh, if a pool hasn't been changed and isn't impacted by anything currently being recalculated like a naive recalculation all pass would just skip over it making it performant again yeah, anyway let's save and reload this And head up to. Oh, are we heading up the next floor? Or no, we're doing the backwards calculation thing to see if this uh, bugs still happen. I thought I took the request animation frame stuff out. Oh no, it's render if need be. Like I left that in on purpose. Oh, that image thing is getting really annoying. Right, while that's calculating, I'm just going to look up the cache directive. Let's see, cache is rendered DOM when changing templates rather than discarding the DOM. You can use this directive of drop minus when to frequently switching between large templates. So I can either cache it myself or I can get lit HTML to cache it. I just have to pass it. Pass it blah, 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 blah. Uh, no, it's not cache, it's key that I want, I think. So sheets are renderable value with a unique key. When the key changes, the previous DOM is removed, disposed for rendering the next value, even if the value of such as template is the same. I think I want to do that now just to see if it works. Because it is really irritating watching the images flicker. Uh, let's see until Imageify. So this may or may not work. Out the build directory so you can just test in production instead of testing online. <laughs> there, no. So the idea here is it should still, like if, if I'm understanding how these directives work, it should still uh, do the ASIC loading thing. But what it should do is, once it's done, it's done. If the uh, item size and title haven't changed, there's like there isn't any need to actually refetch the uh, thing. Uh, 
see anything on the to-do list. Maybe async uh, load save JSON into the save dialog. That the slight delay in the pop-up rendering uh, goes away. Because that load dialog appears ever so slightly faster than the save dialog appears. See that? No more flickering images! Yay! I spoke too soon! <laughs> That, to be honest, might be more related to the whole um, hidden um, attribute approach thing. Uh, so I think what I might do here actually is I'm I'm, I'm gonna like because because I'm I'm not used to doing coding streams live. I'm gonna take a break. Uh, I'm gonna be streaming for an hour. So I've got some data put in. Um, I want to take a break and, and focus on like trying to get that fixed and, and maybe get some of the other uh, ideas added in before I then come back to stream again. So let's get this saved. Okay, so that's going to be all for now. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.